In this video, I visit Kilchurn Castle, Bridge of Orkay, and end the day in my second home, Glencoe. I also get excited by some trees and point at things a lot. Out to Kilchurn Castle. So we're just walking along the sort of what is normally a huge boggy path, but it's as you can see white all over very very frosty so it's quite a a crunchy path even though we've got the wellies on we don't have to worry about stepping into something but we're here today it's freezing very very cold there's not much not much uh, oh sorry there's too much wind this thing if you have a look that's what it's looking like just now so I don't think we're going to get much of a calm, calm event, but um, certainly we're hoping for some good sunrise. A good sunrise anyway, the forecast is good, it's quite clear skies, but there's a bit of cloud to give us some light and there's snow on the hills in the distance there, but there's quite a lot of wind. I was just going to see, see how we get on. It's minus four, I think that's what it was saying in the car. It is very, very cold. But nothing ventured, nothing gained. Um, I'm here with Imran Mirza. That's who you saw photography by Imran. There you go. In the distance there, he's filming his own vlog over there. So he's come up from Bradford. He was up, so show him Glencoe, show him Kilchurn Castle. Hopefully we'll get a good day, but I did forewarn everybody. Um, it's gonna be it's gonna be very, very cold. Uh, I don't think he was prepared for that <laughs> as soon as we stepped out of the car. So, um, and he forgot his gloves. Imran, when you're watching this later on, tut tut. But I had a spare set, so all is well. So, just going to head into the shore, wait for some light, um, set up the camera, and um, see how we get on from there. There's a couple of hardy fishermen who've camped out overnight, as you can see. Over there is their tent. Um, you know, rather them than me. But I don't even think getting the 10 stopper or the 6 stopper or anything like that is going to make any difference. <clears throat> so I'm just going to wait for that light to come up. There's a little bit of colour coming in that cloud. Just wait for the light, get my foreground interest and get set up. sun started to light up the top of the hills. It's not quite lighting up the castle just yet but it will do shortly once the sun comes a little bit higher above the trees but it's looking really nice at the moment. A little bit of dusting of the snow really adds to the image. The reason I'm shooting further back rather than the typical view that people will do right down at the front by the rocks is this lovely sort of hard foreground is making a really good interesting foreground. So that rather than do some of the rocks and just focus on some of the individual bits like that using this foreground Entire, I'll show you the shot on the camera. I'm using this entire sort of foreground with all that hard, the reeds, the rocks, all kind of white and crispy, bits of remnants of a reflection, and then using that to build a panoramic image with the trees at either side. I think in that case it'll work really well. It's something a little bit different, the two trees at either side framing it, partial reflections, but the foreground really adds to it. It's not often you see it like this at Kilchin Castle, with a little bit of snow at the top, so I'm trying to take as much advantage of that as I can. light to hit the castle. It looks quite bright in this image, in this video, but it's not. It's, it's actually quite dark. There's light in the hills, but not on that at the moment. Some reflections every now and again, and the wind picks up, so we're just waiting on that light. And um, Imran, whatever he's doing, I think he's doing some sort of bag review. Uh, I'm sure we'll find out later on, but he's, he's giving it a good bash and whatever it is. He's thumping it on the ground and giving it a good kicking. Um, so I'm sure that'll be an in-depth bag review, but yeah. It looks like he's having a, a very unsavory argument with it. But uh, I'm sure we'll find out eventually what it is that he's actually up to. Anyway, still waiting. It's not much warmer. 
has been chatting to the guys over there um, in the tent that were fishing and things and a uh, lovely bunch of guys, as I say, uh, rather them than me camping out in there in these conditions, but what a cracking view to wake up to. So they're doing some fishing. I think they've, I don't know if they've actually caught anything or not, but uh, I'll maybe go over and ask in a minute um, once I get the shot and get chatting with them. Right, get back on with it then, eh? size lens just to zoom in and get more of a sort of forced perspective shot of the castle in the background behind it just while the light hitting the castle and it's looking lovely so just trying to capture that it's calmed down a little bit get some of those reflections in average shot but I'm leaving a bit of the foreground because I think I'm going to be quite happy with it purely with the balance of the the castle against the sky I'm hiding the power lines as best as I can and I can get the filter on and use a longer exposure to give me better reflections but I think I'm going to leave it like this, it actually works quite well. So tried it with the long lens as well just to get some other abstract shots but I think I'm going to leave it at that. I think I'm done. Move on, get the drone out and get some interesting shots before we move on to Bridge of Orkey and then on to Glencoe. location we've stumbled across on the bridge of Orkey Road so everything is just as you can see completely covered in white frost everything's crisp absolutely beautiful and then we've got these fantastic trees here they, they just look amazing it's a shame about the power lines in there but uh, just trying to find a composition that works I've just been photographing these trees over here have a look around there these two individual trees over here but there's just so much around us um, spot for choice. So what I'm doing here is I'm spending a bit more time in this stunning location just given given the uniqueness of it. So what I found is this little tree down here. There you go. There you go, you can see that better there. So just the way it sticks out from against the rest of the background, I'm getting in quite low. See here, getting in quite low with my camera, just a little bit off the ground. I'm a little bit higher so I don't get this foliage in the foreground. Sitting up high enough so I can separate that tree up against the background. So as I'm sure you can see in the viewfinder there, that's what I'm trying to achieve here. So what I'm trying to do there is focus, well, frame that tree, maybe a different angle, up against the sort of background. It is cutting the foliage in the tree line at the end, but that's the best I can do any higher up and it blends into the background. Um, so you can see that's, that's blending into the background. So what I'm trying to do is get it standing. So I'm using a very shallow aperture, so 2.8, the lowest I can go, just to focus on the tree to throw the rest of it out to focus against the rest of the background and then using the tree line in that shot as well. Just trying to give me something a little bit different. So I'll just mirror up and just get ready to take the shot. You can see that's what I'm trying to achieve there. The, tree, the tree's in focus, everything else is out of focus, so it helps it stand out. Otherwise, it starts blending in to the background and you can't make out the tree from the rest of it. literally just slammed the brakes on going down this road to Bridge of Orkey because I've just spotted some more of these trees all covered in this hard frost. But these ones in particular over there, they're just against the backdrop of the trees behind it which have no snow on them, is making a really good composition I think. So I'm just trying to get the 
exposure right here. And all I'm going to do long, large f-stop just to try and get everything in focus, all the foreground, all the way up to the trees and everything in the back of it. I'm going to do one with a shallower depth of field just to see how it looks. Because I will then have set options. We've got one with the trees just in focus and everything else slowly out of focus leading up to the trees and one with everything in focus and I can decide which of the two work best for me later on. However, I'm really liking the one, let's see if the back of the camera shot there, where it's just the trees in focus, everything else is very subtly out. And then just those trees pinned sharp with the trees behind them and everything else leading up the hill is just looking perfect out of focus but enough to lead your interest all the way up there rather than it being distracting so well spotted it was worth stopping the can getting out and doing that i'm just going to catch up before the brief light disappears at the top of the trees and then we're going to move on we're actually supposed to be in glencoe two hours ago but we're still on the bridge of orkey road um absolutely amazing and then we just come across this field and like it's this, there's lone trees standing there, it's just, it's just asking to be photographed, isn't it? So doing a mid-sized zoom, but then, uh, it was a mid-lens, mid sorry, and now I've got my zoom lens on, and then I've been able to get a shot like that, completely framing that picture against the background. Absolutely wonderful, absolutely really, really happy with that, actually. Um, it's just come out fantastic, and there's another couple of smaller trees over there, so I think I'm going to do a couple of zoom shots along here to get varying shots of that. Um, I'm just... It's been one of the best days I've actually had, even though the sky is clear, you know, the sun's out. It's just absolutely beautiful. I keep stopping every 200 yards, and I think everybody's getting fed up of it, but you know what? When you've got conditions like this, how could you not take advantage of that? Anyway, can't wait to share these images with you later on and see how we get on. So we ended up at Lagging Garb for sunset, but as you can see, not much of a sunset. I'm going to be right there. But, you know, we've had a good day. It's been fantastic. Bridge of Orkey was a surprise um, sort of location throughout the day where we got loads and loads of photos um, that just, I think, surprised me. I didn't expect to see that kind of frost, um, that much sort of those kind of white conditions. But it was really good. We came to Lag and Garb trying to get a sunset. I think I just missed the best of the light, though. Um, I've taken the shot. See how it looks, but I think if it'd been here five minutes earlier, it would have helped. But um, food called. In future, don't eat, get the photos first. But the light's all gone, it's getting dark quite quick now, so I'm just going to head back, um, call it a day. It's been a very useful and fruitful day. Lots and lots of variety of different images. Um, and, uh, you know, Glencoe, no matter, well, Bridge of Orkey, Glencoe, Kiltern Castle, the area always gives you something a little bit different. It's always worth coming, no matter what the conditions. Even though I'm absolutely freezing now, I've had a fantastic day. I've thoroughly enjoyed myself. And you know what? Can't wait to come back to Glencoe again, presumably the weekend. Anyway, see you for now. If you enjoyed the video, then please feel free to subscribe and comment below. I would like to wish you all a very happy new year and hope 2018 is another great year for you all. Thank you for watching.